Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Strides Professor and today we're going to be looking at the patch notes for 1016 for League of Legends. So as always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton on the channel. Um, check out the rest of the content on the channel as well. We stream every night starting around 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, usually going till about 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Very friendly, chill community. We'd love to have you. It's only on YouTube starting around 11.30. Uh, we do patch notes like these, tier lists, um, every single patch and then we have individual champion guides topical guides like how to macro better how to micro better uh, split pushing guides uh, what is dodging when should you dodge just all sorts of topical guides and we have over 200 coaching sessions cataloged on the channel as well so just tons and tons of content and if you enjoy some single player games we do regularly cover total war warhammer always updating new legendary campaigns and uh, upon request we have now started doing other single player games as well so we're going through Witcher 3 right now. Um, so if we can get enough people to sponsor a campaign of a single player game, I'll do that as well. And you can check that out on the channel. You can sponsor your own campaign. It's just $5 an hour plus the cost of the game if I don't own the game. Um, and I can help you crowdfund that as well. So if you're interested in something, just email me at the at gmail.com. Let me know what you have in mind. Then I can um, you know, just market it to everyone on the stream and in videos and all that kind of stuff. And we'll see if we can get enough funding together uh, to make that happen. So, anyways, okay, let's go ahead and get in here. And apologize for the uh, the um, I don't know the the background here. We are in the process of moving right now, so we've got all my books off the shelves. Um, we're going to be moving over the next week or so, so that's why it looks so barren in the background. But okay, let's go ahead and get in here. Um, all right, so let me just move that. There we go. Lots of changes on this patch. Uh, Yone is coming out. I do think he is going to be extremely strong, and I think that it's going to be very rare for you to get to play him. A lot of people have been asking on the stream, you know, what do I think of him? Am I going to play him a lot? Should I? Should other people buy him and get him? Should they play him a lot? I think I would wait until his price comes down if you're strapped for Blue Essence, if you're going to buy him a Blue Essence, because after the first week, I think it goes down to 6300 whereas I think it's like 7800 the first week everybody's going to pick man this guy. I'm telling you right now, he is going to be 100% presence for the next two weeks for several reasons. Number one, he is very strong in general. He does a lot of damage on his abilities. It's really hard to itemize against him because he has both magic damage and physical damage built into his kit. Um, he's got that shield. He just has a lot of really powerful things going on. So first of all, he's really good gameplay-wise. Second of all... Um, he's related, lore-wise, to another champion, Yasuo, who's extremely popular as well on the channel. And he has sort of the East Asian theme about him, which is really popular for all champions like that. When you think about Yasuo, Lee Sin, all that stuff, people love East Asian theme champs. Um, you know, he just looks cool. He's got a new skin line with that uh, spirit blossom that looks really awesome as well. Um, so all of these things come together to make him something that is going to be extremely desirable to pick. And because he's a new champion, you know, everyone's going to want to pick him as well. And everyone's going to want to ban him because he's a new champion. People don't want that play, don't want people playing that for the first time in ranked. Um, so he's going to be banned a lot as well. Um, and he's, you know, potentially really strong and annoying to go against gameplay wise. So people will ban him for those reasons also. So that's why I just think unless you are actually literally first pick and for some reason he gets through both lobbies and doesn't get banned if you are literally the first pick you might get to pick him but i think he's probably going to be banned at least 40 percent of the time in games and i think he's going to be picked the other percentage of the time so anyways um so yeah i think he's going to come in pretty good maybe a 50 percent win rate for a new champion that's pretty hard to play like him so i, th I think he will be pretty solid <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's going to be very, very rare that you would get to play him. You have basically, you start off with a 1 in 10 chance of being the first pick. Uh, he can also be flexed into multiple roles. I forgot to mention that. So he can um, be played mid for sure, probably top, almost certainly. And then most likely he'll be able to jungle. I saw some jungle videos with him. And people might even try him ADC as bot lane. I don't know if he's going to be as good as ADC, but it's at least three different roles where you could pick him. So... I think that you pretty much have a 1 in 10 chance of being able, being the first pick and being able to pick him. And then I think you probably have maybe a 50-50 of him not being banned by either side. So you're probably looking at a 5% chance, maybe. So like a 1 in 20 
So if you play four games um, of League of Legends a day or something like that, you might get to play them once every five days on average. So I, I, I really don't think that you're going to get to play in this patch most of the time. Anyways, unless you just want to play like custom games with your friends and they just let you pick in all the time, it's going to be tough out there. Okay, Akali. Um, five point strike, getting five extra damage. This is pretty significant because I think she can spam this quite a bit. Um, it does have ratios on it as well. And then the Shuriken flip going over to magic damage from physical damage is pretty huge because um, obviously she's going to get Sorcerer Boot. So, and then she a lot of times will get an Oblivion Orb somewhere in there as well. So she's going to get anywhere from, you know, 18 to 33 points basically percent extra damage on that like flat pin is not the same as percentage increase in damage but it's it's a lot it's a lot so if you hit everything like so very skilled akali players that use the e aggressively and can consistently hit that shuriken flip this will be um a pretty significant buff um so, I don't know. Maybe we see her in pro a little bit more. She has virtually no presence in pro right now. And I think her win rate is fairly low in solo queue as well. Um, let me see. It's almost always low in solo queue. But she can still be really strong. She's at 47%. I think she'll gain a couple percent off of this, maybe in solo queue, and go to 49%. We might start seeing her in pro a little bit. So, I don't think she's going to go back to necessarily needing to pick banner every game. But I do think that she will be really good after these changes okay bonus attack speeds going down to 40 percent that's going to hurt her scaling pretty significantly because um she picks hurricane as well so every attack in team fights is really hitting three different targets and that's going to slow down your blade of the rune king as well um so that that's in team fights that's a very significant hit to her dps basically taking away 20 percent attack speed but I still think she will be really good. Um, I think Caitlyn has kind of taken over on this patch. Caitlyn's doing a lot better than I thought she would um, on the current patch. So I'm kind of surprised it nerfed her, but it's like it was her rise was. I didn't predict it would go up that much, and really like they're kind of lagging a couple of times by a couple of patches whenever they do these things because they have to plan them out pretty well in advance. Um, I still think Ash will be a top five, though, for sure, ADC, even after this. Just because, frankly, there just aren't that many like good, high-quality ADCs. It's still one of the weaker roles in solo queue. It's pretty much always going to be one of the weakest roles, unless it's, like, super OP. I mean, Enchanters with Ardent Sensor are very good right now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just look at the, There's so many ADCs that are below 52%. Like, it's actually ridiculous. The only two that are picked consistently that have a very high pick rate are Caitlyn and Ash that are over 52%. And everything else is kind of in the gutter. So, like, Ezreal, who's very popular, is at 49%. I still think Ezreal's good if you're good on him. Those nerfs did hurt him, but... I still think he can be good. Then you have Kaisa, who's pretty low. Now, I saw someone... I don't remember who posted this up, but, like, someone that I follow on Twitter was like, oh, there's only, um, you know three champions people pick an ADC I'm like it's not that bad I mean there's there's like six but the problem is that only two of them are like a really high win rate it's like Vayne and Jen are okay you know but then out of that you know you've got Lucian Kaisa and Ezreal are all like pretty bad and Aphelios is just like he's terrible <laughs> after those buffs honestly didn't think it was going to hit him that hard but he's down at 46 percent so he's in a pretty bad place right now so, yeah, it's not like there's just, you know, whatever, three picks, as someone, you know, posted up on Twitter. There are more. It's just there are really only two that are, like, very top-notch right now. Ezreal, if you're really skilled on him, and vain in certain matchups. Maybe Kaisa, if you're really skilled on her, can still be pretty strong. But Caitlyn's just out of control, and um, Ash is still going to be pretty good. Okay, Bard. Um, I don't like that they're nerfing Bard. I mean, he has had a pretty strong pro presence, though. I mean, he was 62% win rate, highest presence, um, support, highest, fourth highest champ overall. This is on patch 1014 in pro, just because 1015 still doesn't have a ton of games on it. It's only got one week's worth of games. Um, so, I guess statistically, yeah, they probably need to dial him back. Over 80% presence is usually their threshold to nerf, although... You know, sometimes they do it a bit more. 
or a bit more aggressively than that. Um, and then he has like a 53% win rate as well. So he's the second highest win rate in solo queue. I'll be honest with you. I don't know why he's that high of a win rate to me. He's a very high skill cap champ that people can mess up a lot and requires very careful consideration of roaming and tempo, lane pressure, and balancing all that out. So I feel like he's one of the harder supports to play fully optimally, but statistically, he's just winning a lot. So he's really strong right now. So I guess it makes sense they're nerfing him a bit. Even though I kind of hate to see it because he is a fun, like interactive, very unique kind of support. So I like it. But anyways, they are nerfing his health by 15. Not a massive deal, but it matters in all in lanes early on. And then the maximum heal getting nerfed by 15 is pretty significant. I think you max this second, but either way. Um, now, I want to know is the baseline heal, because in, in combat, a lot of times, he just casts this instantly on someone and goes for the baseline heal. Um, so I'll be curious to see if this affects the base heal. I imagine it probably does, and that, that might make it super low. low. Let me see. Lee, Wiki check this out real quick um seventy okay so this has not been nerfed yet um if that affects base heal okay so it looks like the base is half percentage wise no not exactly because the minimum here is 150 and it scales up to 230. Although the 70, the 30 go into 70. Okay, so what? So it goes up like 130 percent. Is that right? No, it's not. So it's 130 percent early. So I don't know what the formula is for that. So on the first one, it's about 130 percent going from 30 to 170 but on the second one it's up like a little bit more than 50 percent so who knows i don't know how the maximum is going to relate to the minimum if it affects the minimum if that's 15 off the minimum as well then that would only be a 30 heal <laughs> level one or a 15 heal which would be pretty ridiculous the ap ratio doubles i don't know if it only affects maximum that may not matter as much as it appears just because in like hot combat situations you just cast it on somebody usually, right? It doesn't have time to charge up. So it would affect the early game, but not so much the late game. So if it starts at the same number, but then just scales up to be less at max, he'll probably still be pretty good. So this will probably hurt him maybe 1% or so, but I think he'll still be a competitive pick. Um, even though once again, I don't fully understand the reasons why um, both in solo queue and pro, he's outshining other picks. I guess like in pro, I can kind of get it um, so he does enchanter like things, but he has a really good engage and a lot of enchanters lack really solid engage So I kind of get that in pro in solo queue I don't know either way 1% down probably be fine. Okay, so Evelyn they're trying to make it to where you can play her mid lane So you can spam the Q over and over and over again I don't think this is gonna be enough to make her like really viable um, and I, I don't honestly don't really like the idea of making her flex I think flexing is pretty toxic for pro in general and it can be really annoying for solo queue especially at higher higher elo brackets um, I mean how fast can she wave clear this so bonus damage so spike damage maximum damage okay so she like at level three and a line in the direction okay total damage maximum damage what, what am I looking at so 30 plus 90 equals 150 that doesn't make any sense Dealing damage to the first enemy hit. The enemy hit takes bonus magic damage from her next three O oh, basic attacks and abilities. Recast it, unleashes spikes in the direction, dealing magic damage to all enemy struggle, prioritize. So the spike damage is dart damage. 
Okay, the spikes are the little things that come up. So it's dark damage plus spikes. Those are the same thing. The 30... No. I don't know. Whatever. Look, look. <laughs> it's just going to come down to how fast does she wave clear. And this, I don't know why they have three different columns here. Um... But it looks like it's somewhere between 90 and 120 or like early levels like 100. Is that enough wave clear? I don't know. Like if she can wave clear fast enough, just like clear the whole wave super fast and then go roam, then obviously that's going to be strong. But she doesn't go invisible until like level 6. So for the first, you know, five levels, she's not going to be that dangerous on the roam. But then if she can push and roam after that, that actually will be pretty, pretty obnoxious. Um, it's just like, can she get harassed out enough? If she gets low, um, then she ends up healing for a lot as well. So, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't like the design choice to try to put her in the mid, but also don't think it's going to be enough. Maybe against certain like mid lanes that are really easy and very passive. There aren't a ton of those, but um, I, I think she's still going to be terrible mid. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, with the allure and then you flash E on somebody, you can get a good charm. Um, but I think with her invisibility not being available until level 6, then that's not going to be that great. Okay, Fiora. Lowering her lunge time by 2 seconds is pretty pretty huge. So she can get it down to 3 seconds when she gets 50% refunded. So if she has... Now, is that 50% of the base, or... I think it's 50% of the of the base amount. So, if she gets to, like, 40% CDR, then she'd go to, like, 3 seconds or so, 4 seconds, and then 50% and go down to 2 seconds. I mean, that is, that is very significant. Like, that, that definitely could bring her in. It's like an anti-tank, like, hard split push top lane. They did buff um, the... Um, Ravenous, uh, Ravenous Tiamat item. I'm blanking out on the name. Um, they did buff that like maybe five patches ago, and she is really good with that. I think they also made it to where her Q can affect towers, so she like knocks towers down really quick. So I'm not entirely sure what's keeping her out of the meta because it feels like she'd be a very, very good split pusher against a lot of tanks out there. Um, I'm a 50% win rate. Right? I think this is pretty big. I think she'll go up 1% or 2%, maybe like 52%. And she could go hard on the split push now. Her problem is that like she doesn't really do anything other than split push that well. She's kind of like just a higher skill cap Trendomir, I think. Um, maybe just her other items just aren't that great. I mean, Trinity Force is kind of like a lot of people are doing Blather and King stuff instead of Trinity. And she really likes uh, Ravenous just because of how her kit's designed. She needs the Tiamat to wave clear. And um, I think her Q can apply lifesteal as well, so that's why it's so good with Ravenous. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's like this build is just so expensive. It's 3500 and then 3700 So she really can't abuse cheap items, but if she gets a lot of money and games go longer, then she can be, um, she can be really strong. So, I mean, when she gets these three items, it says she has a 65% win rate. So it's like... It's just getting to those items. Maybe she has really bad matchups into popular things like Darius and stuff like that. But um, the, some of those champs have been nerfed, and some of like um, Set, for example, has been nerfed pretty hard. So maybe maybe that's it. Like, what what is she strong against? So top lane, she's good against. Yeah, a lot of these other melee bruiser type of champs. Uh, what's she weak against? Okay, bad against. Really, she's bad against Malphite. I guess it depends on the elo bracket. I mean, if you repost his ult, like, what does he do after that? I mean, your reflexes have to be pretty fast. And it looks like her win rate goes down a lot over time. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. There must just be a lot of bad Fioras out there. I don't get it. Like, Wukong's been nerfed a lot, so that matchup should be a little bit better. Uh, Shin is actually... Um, having a bad matchup against Shin is not good because he is super strong right now. So yeah, there's a few bad matchups um, for sure, but 
I feel like she could definitely make a comeback. Maybe even in pro. I don't think we're seeing her that much in pro, but if someone wants to play her like in a hard split situation, it's kind of like the team fight matters so much right now in pro because people put so much pressure on getting like early rift and early dragons, but particularly rift. And so the fact that she's not that great of a duelist early on, she doesn't bring any CC, it's hard to gank for her. She really needs a lot of items to come online. That, that just doesn't really suit the pro meta right now as far as I understand it. Um, but maybe things will change. So pretty bad at, at, um, at ganks and helping out with scuttles, rifts, dragons, stuff like that. But she does split push really well. So I don't know. I think a couple percentage points, maybe people look at her in pro, but in solo queue I think she'll be a bit stronger. Hecarim, devastating charge. 25% um, to 100% over 3 seconds with 4th second at max value. What does that mean? Um, bonus. Okay, so he's getting bonus movement speed, which does translate into. And you get a fourth second now? With fourth second at maximum value. Oh, so it's the same thing. So you get to max value over three seconds, and then at four seconds, you still get max value. So you get 100% extra movement. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to move him too much. He's, like, okay in the meta, but the problem is, kind of like Fiora, his itemization is just really not optimal right now. Like, typically, you want to go Cinder Hulk into, um, Cinder Hulk into Trinity. And Trinity's just so expensive. It's really out of the meta for a lot of champs right now. And, like, it just doesn't have a lot of synergy there. Because he's just not that tanky with just Cinder Hulk. You already have pretty good wave clear, so it's kind of overkill getting Cinder Hulk. It helps, but... It'd just be so much nicer if he could afford to go something like Dead Man's Plate or just something else that gets, like, health to actually stack with Cinder Hulk. And you can get, you know, usually it's, like, Spirit Massage after that. What they really need to do with Hecarim is just make his uh, magic damage stuff physical. At least his, um... Oh, dang it, what it... Like, his... Like, his ult or his W. Like, just something needs to be physical damage so that he could build lethality. And that might be something useful, because if he could go Ghostblade comfortably without being a troll build, um, that would give him a much, much needed power spike. Then he could go for a much more aggressive build, like Warrior into um, Warrior into Ghostblade, and then you could get Umbral Glaive to help you control vision and stuff like that. Like, I think allowing him to go Lethality would be nice, but the problem right now is that like two of his abilities um, do magic damage. And so he just doesn't get any benefit off lethality because it's magic damage. So I think that's really what they need to do with him is just itemize and just allow him to go for that more aggressive build path. Maybe they think that'd buff him too much. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else what else to do with him at that point. Maybe make his like movement speed do even more damage on the first hit if they really like that so that he could go something like Dead Man's Plate. Maybe increase his damage. I don't know. They before they ner they've nerfed his Q a couple of times. Before they nerfed his Q, he was too strong. So he's just really really hard to balance correctly, just because he has such awesome ganking early on. So, anyways, all right. So I don't think that's going to move the move the needle too much. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't know. Maybe a percent or something. He's not terrible right now, but Jax. Now this champ, in my experience recently, is just absolutely god awful. I mean, maybe I just saw some really bad Jax players yesterday, and I'm traumatized. Um, but I don't. It's just same thing. Items very expensive. Just feels really lackluster unless he's really far ahead, and he just doesn't offer that much in team fights or early game skirmishes. He does have a stun at least, unlike Fiora. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's a 50% win rate, so it's not that bad, but. He just doesn't do a lot early, and this is a meta where you need to do stuff early, I feel like. Um, so, Counter-Strike, two-second cooldown at early ranks. I mean, that's nice because that's the last thing you level, typically, so getting two extra seconds. But realistically, you're probably still only casting this once in most fights. So, I guess that'll allow you to trade more in lane, give you more trading opportunities, but I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. Like, his problem is just his items are just very expensive. Now, he is super strong once he gets the right items. I mean, part of it is people just do not itemize him correctly either because you can get so many different things with him. Um, like, I think, is he like Blather and King? Yeah, Trinity. 
So two offensive items. He's still going to be pretty squishy. He does get some nice resistances off of his ult. But once again, just like super expensive items. 65% win rate if he gets them. But, um, you know, pretty weak before he gets them completed. But if you get someone like to turbo gank for you and you get ahead, then he can be pretty oppressive later on. Okay, Jen. Final shot damage to structures increased to 1.5. Um, total attack damage. Now the same as a normal critical strike. Okay. A little bit of extra damage to structures. It's all right. Jen's, are, Jen's already in an okay place. I don't think in pro he's going to be that popular just because people can exploit his reload mechanic so much like they will really hammer him and take advantage of that and he kind of has trouble last hitting and controlling waves um, because of that mechanic it can sort of force you to use mana to grenade to get last hits and you know they can just put you at a major disadvantage if they see you use your grenade on the wave to last hit then they know they can engage on you all that kind of stuff so it's just the way he's designed mechanically makes him very difficult to pull off in pro it has happened before, but his numbers just have to be ridiculous for that. But um, in solo queue, I think he'll go up a little bit for sure. Like The nice thing about him is he does a lot of stuff early. Like I've said before, um, in some of these lanes, he can do a ton of damage. He can punish you know, your Ezreal's, your Kaisa's, stuff like that. Um, he can pound them early. He has good pressure. He's good with a lot of kind of the, not necessarily off meta, but like side meta picks, stuff that's like popular but not necessarily optimal like your luxes your zerats your bell causes like these kind of like hard poke champions even karma and stuff like that he's very good in those types of lanes because you can just kind of poke them out chain your cc with your w and then like the long range your ult plus something like zerats ult is just disgusting if you poke people out and use both of those at the same time um, so he is very, very good in certain poke comps, and he does a lot of damage to squishy champs. So in YOLO queue, where everyone's running around like double assassin comps and stuff like that, um, he does do enough burst damage where he can keep up um, with those types of comps. So I think he's pretty good. He has a very clear sort of niche, certain type of comps, certain um, things that he's good at. So I think this will move it up maybe a little bit, but not that much. Okay. Um, capped okay what 375 for main target against champions now uncapped against all targets fix a bug in jinx's r where the damage cap against monsters was capped against champions instead majorly impacting her power against enemies with high health we're bringing the super mega death wait what i'm gonna have to read this so the max she could do was 375 bonus damage off her rocket. That could actually be really huge if there was a mistake that was holding her back from hundreds of damage potentially on her ult. It says especially against high health targets. Um, uncapped against all targets. Two, wait, 250. Um, wait, is that based on how far it's traveled? Okay, Jinx fires the rocket. Grant, okay, the rocket explodes. Physical damage to all enemies in a radius, revealing them for two seconds. Flat damage based on travel distance. Okay, so it is based on travel distance. The bonus damage is based on missing health is always the same. Okay, the maximum damage is reached after 1,500 units. Okay, that's pretty far. It's like a screen length. Um, okay, so up to 150% bonus AD plus 35% of the target's missing health. Is that what it is, the 35%? Where does it say the 375? Take 80% damage. Bonus damage for missing health based on each unit's own missing health. Okay. I don't... See where it says the 375. Damn, 1,000 radius? Oh, sight radius of the missile. Okay, but it's 400 explosion radius. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know what exactly that means. If that means that this was previously capped, the 25% was capped at 375. Yeah, and like a 3,000 health tank is missing like 2,000 health. Then this would have been 500 damage, and that would have been capped at 175. I think. And if that affects the bonus AED, I don't know. I assume it means the missing health. Because it says... Um, against high health enemies. So, it, it could be a big deal, especially against tanks. Um, especially once you like get to level 11. So, how much of a big deal? I, I don't know. Um, it does have all these extra modifiers, but probably not enough to bring her like super like up a ton of percentage points, unless I'm misunderstanding what that means, but it'll help up 1% or so. So, I like all these changes. These are like champions that are not like amazing right now, but they're okay and they have like specific types of niches. And they're just barely nudging them in power, so I like that. <clears throat> so good work so far. Okay, Karma. Continue to be strong. Multi flex role who tends to have too much control and safety, so we're trimming her down in solo queue. I do not like this change because I don't think Karma is oppressive right now. Um. I mean, she's got a 33% win rate on 10-14. On 10-15. She has a 50% win rate on 10-15. Um, dang it, let me go back. And then 10-13. Um, she had a 52%. So, like, in a 62% presence on 10-13, 10-14, which is what I've been using the most, it's 65% present. So, she's well under the 80% threshold that they say for needing a nerf in pro. Her win rate's low. Her solo queue um, is, is not that great. It's okay. It's 50%. So I, I don't understand with a 14% presence. So I don't get it. Like, I don't know why they're singling her out. It's like, yeah, she can be flexed. I mean, they maybe they think that certain comps, I don't know. Because she just doesn't have the win rate, doesn't have the presence to justify nerfing her. And these are some pretty hard nerfs too. Um, I mean, 65 mana at all ranks. It's not like a massive deal after your first back, but Karma's really at her strongest, you know, in the one to five pre six because you have an ult and most other people don't right so you can do a lot of damage if you hit those empowered cues and you're consistently you know poking them with auto attacks um w's and all that kind of stuff she can be very very aggressive and she scales later on you know to be a pretty decent enchanter late game too especially in five on five team fights where you can mantra your e so I think she's cool. She's a very unique champion, provides early pressure for an enchanter and scales reasonably well, but not like mega overpowered late game. Um, I, and she can be flexed. She's a support that can be flexed, like they said, to top or to mid, but it's not having a major impact. Like, yes, that is strong. And they do this to Karma and Lulu all the time. If they ever get played in solo lanes, those two are always the ones that get mega nerfed. Um, I think that's cool though. Maybe they think that's too strong strategically, but statistically it just doesn't make sense. But they're giving her two big nerfs, so 65 mana, so you will run out of mana early on. A little bit more. I mean, you're leveling this first, so like, if you spam all this level one, yeah, it will matter. I mean, you'll probably lose one Q in the first laning phase if you're really aggressive. Um, so this is going to hurt the Guardian build. If you're going Mana Flow Band, that might help you out a little bit. Um, usually you want to go Airy with Mana Flow or even um, Comet sometimes. So, And then th this is even bigger, though. The two-second cooldown at all ranks is a very big deal. I mean, this was a huge thing for Nami back in the day. Nami used to be very dominant, 54%. They just put one extra second on her W. And Nami is similar to Karma, where it's like early pressure, early harass, pretty good utility late, but not OP. But most of her strength is in the early game. And this is a massive, massive nerf. So that was just one second extra. This is two seconds extra on her main harassment tool. And you want to be casting this sort of on time every time. So 
that those two nerves together are gonna really clap her early game. So I think she'll go down one or two percent in solo queue, and pro will probably drop pretty significantly. Um, I mean, it's already thirty three percent. Like, I don't know. I, I don't like it. That that's that's one nerf on this patch. I really am not a big fan of. But okay. Um, it just seems a little a little unnecessary to me. It's like, cause she's not even really pressuring out other supports, right? Like, I mean, she's the third most picked. I guess in the support role, she's got a fifty percent. Actually, she's just banned a lot. She's not even the most picked support. She's a third most presence, but what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's the ninth most picked support, and a lot of times. You know, those bands are for mid lane karma anyways, or top lane karma, just because she's a flex pick. So it's not even like she's being banned because she's that great at support. Like, you know, there are eight other supports that are picked before she is. So I, I don't know. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Okay, Q, lay waste, going down to a point three. This is pretty significant because that's basically, um, you know, doubled. Because the Q, if somebody's isolated, does double damage. So instead of having a point seven, now it's going to have a 0.6. So if you have 100, um, and it's, this is like a one second cooldown. So you spam this really hard late games. I think this is actually a pretty big deal. It's going to hurt his um, jungle clear. Probably pretty significantly. And then um, his ability to sort of duel, especially in the early game, is going to be hurt. So he did get a huge win rate boost off of some of those changes. Um, a lot more than I thought, but... I mean, he's still only like 50, 52 and a half percent, but that, that's fine. They really don't want Jungle Karthus to be a thing because he's so uninteractive, but um, thank God they're nerfing this champ. Um, yeah, it, he is just way too strong. We got to see that last time. He just deletes people way too consistently after that buff. Because he can spam this Q. It's on an extremely low cooldown once you upgrade it. Kha'Zix is just too dangerous. I, I just I don't like him. I think he's just really, really toxic if he gets ahead because it's so hard to track him because that invisibility. Um, <clears throat> so good. I like that nerf. Um, Lucian. Piercing light damage going to an extra 10 and then Culling doing an extra like 10% or so damage there. Maybe a little bit more. Um, if you hit him with every shot. And that's pretty good. He's got kind of a low win rate right now, and they want to add in more, like, early pressure ADCs into the mix. Caitlyn historically matches up extremely well versus Lucian because she has the huge range. Ash also does pretty well in Lucian. So I think this is, it's a pretty, pretty safe buff. And he's got a low win rate of 48%, so I'm okay with that. And so good he should be able to just kill if he can close the gap and get a really good combo he should be able to kill people early on if he can outplay you know their abilities like if he can e and dodge like a caitlin net or a caitlin q or something like that he should be able to put a lot of damage onto her um because he pays such a heavy price for being low ranged i think he's 500 range they could just increase his range to 525 but anyways that's fine i don't think he's going to move up too much maybe he gets a couple percentage points off of this I don't think it'll be a huge deal though. Okay, misfortune two extra AD probably not gonna matter. Um, Q, I, I don't understand. Oh, they're buffing it. Okay, so they're trying to make Morgana like a pretty reasonable pick instead of Tom Kinch. Um, the sort of an anti Nautilus, anti Leona, anti Thresh. So Morgana's pretty good against those heavy CC comps. She's definitely. Um, pretty solid so i think she has a hard time into enchanters especially intelligent enchanters that buy mikhail's to cancel out her q so i think she's a pretty bad matchup into like soraka or janna um but she's very good into things like leona thrash nautilus a lot of those hard engage champs because your black shield is obviously really good then you have a q for like a big bind um her major problem is that her cooldowns are all so long. So lowering one of these by one second is pretty nice. But yeah, I think this will move her up a little bit. I don't think she has like an insane win rate right now, but um, yeah. 
pretty good like niche counter pick in certain situations. And she's very, very good if you have an, if the enemy team has a lot of CC and you have like a super fed assassin or something like that. You throw a black shield, like a big black shield on a Katarina or something like that. It's going to be extremely good. So I think in the right circumstances against very heavy CC comps, she can be pretty solid. All right, Nautilus losing 15 off of his shield. This is pretty significant. Um, he's going to get busted off early games. He just really doesn't have the same kind of defensive capabilities as like Leona does. Um, so his win rate's already not amazing in solo queue. It's 0.49. Um, so I think he might go down like a percentage here. In pro, he's still very popular. 53% win rate. Just very guaranteed um, high impact ultimate. So I, I think he'll still be pretty popular in pro off of this. Um, but it's going to hurt him a little bit. Maybe he goes down to 50% or something. Okay, Nico. Now, Bloom, I think, so, this, so up front is 10 damage, and then it blooms twice, I believe, for 5 extra damage. So that's 20 extra damage if you hit somebody with everything. I don't think she's going to be that strong, though. Um, if anything, this would be for, like, mid lane Nico. I mean, she does have some interesting use cases. Like... That is going to help her wave clear a lot, and um, her she can use like against hook champions she can use her little clone or whatever to block things like thresh hook, nautilus hook, stuff like that. So she does have some interesting outplay potential there. Um, she just has to get so close range for her ult. I think she has kind of long cooldowns. I'm not 100% sure why she's not played all the time. I thought the on-hit Nico or, like, the ADC Nico was actually very interesting. I think they nerfed that just way too hard. But, like, ADC Nico, I think, would actually be really cool if they bring that back. You know, where she could go, like, Ginsu's, Nashers, Hurricane, stuff like that, and play around her E. I thought that was actually a pretty cool, like, um, pretty cool ADC potential there. But they, they don't like that. You know, Cannon, Nico, these kind of, like, ranged utility mage type of champs being played in the ADC role. I think they should embrace that. I think they should allow, like, make Nico and Cannon, like, viable choices bot lane. I think that really opens up a lot of play patterns that are that are interesting. Because, like, right now, and I've talked about this all the time with ADCs, ADC is always going to be, like, the most difficult position to balance because so many of the ADCs all have the same type of niche. They're all ranged physical damage dealers and... It's often a very, very narrow champion pool. It's always the most narrow role, right? Where you have, like, there's going to be one or two. This is every meta since, like, the beginning of time in ADC role. Well, Season 8 changed that a little bit when they bought they brought in, like, Vlad and Swain and stuff like that. But they, they've gone back because everyone grabbed their pitchforks and freaked out because there were mages in the bot lane. Um, but it's, it's the same old stuff every time. It's like, okay, there's one or two dominant ADCs, right? Right now, it's Caitlyn and Ash, and then you see Ezreal some too, but, you know, it, 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 this is not uncommon to see, like, you know, three different ADCs have over 20% representation, right? Versus if you look at support, there's one champ has over 20% representation with Thresh. Mid lane, no chance, 12% max. Jungle, 16% max. Top lane, um... 10% max. So what does that mean? That means it's all all the it's all concentrated. And the reason that mid and top are always the most diverse is because there's so many or the most diversity of picks. It's because there's so many different things you can do in those roles. You top lane, you can play a split pusher, you can play a team fire, you can play pressure early, you can play magic damage, you can play physical damage. And all that's represented here, right? Like we have you know, a couple of split pushers at the top. We got Darius, who's like a team fighter, early pressure with Renekton. We got some AP mixed in there with Mordekaiser. Um, not a lot of AP, but then you have Singed and Malphite as well that can do some AP mixed into there. And it's just a good, healthy mix of stuff, right? You look at mid lane. Okay, you got some magic damage. You got some physical damage. You got melee. You got range. You have assassins. You have control mages. You have scaling assassin type of champs. There's just so much more diversity of things that can be played there. And then you look at, like, ADC. It's like, okay, we have ranged physical damage dealers. 
there's some diversity. It's like, okay, you know, you got a Ginsu user with Bane, you got like a crit user with Caitlyn, but they're all auto attacking, physical damage, range champs that are relatively weak early game that scale really well with golden items into late game. And that's just always the formula for ADCs. And so I wish they would shake it up a little bit and just say, hey, you know what? We're going to bring back Nico. We're going to bring back Kennen. These are like team fight mage type of ADCs and just balance them around like okay they don't maybe don't do as much like sustained damage in that role but they they bring utility or just allow Swain or Vlad um, to be able to go down there so they've tried to diversify this a little bit with Aphelios but the problem is he just does everything and so you just have to nerf him a lot like Aphelios, Kaisa, and Senna have kind of been their answers to this ADC dilemma but the problem is they're too good because they do everything it's like they're ranged physical damage dealers, but they do everything else too. And so they're just so much better than other ADCs. So I, I just wish they would allow more diversity. But to be fair, they've tried that, and the community really flipped their wig about it, so they ended up taking it back. But anyways, mostly through the complaining of pro players, most notably like Doublelift that I can remember saying, oh, you know, they're just like, I've been playing ADC for 10 years. I shouldn't have to change my role. It's like... Or change the kind of champions I can play. Well, it's like, well, guess what? Jungle has to do that, like, multiple times per season. Top has to do that. You have to learn how to play tanks. You have to learn how to play engage. You have to learn how to play assassin. <clears throat> Depending on what the meta is. ADC is the only one where it's like, I've been playing Ezreal for 10 seasons, and you can keep playing Ezreal. You know, it's like, or, oh, no, I got to switch off of playing, you know, whatever, Kai'Sa, and now I have to play Caitlyn, right? But it's, I don't know. I wish they would diversify, but anyways. In soapbox rant. Okay, not turn. Um, cooldowns, 14 seconds. That is significant. Uh, basic attacks against enemy champions and monsters reduced, so not against minions. <clears throat> so he's not going to be as good in mid and top lane. Okay, fine. I don't think he was like that overwhelming in those lanes, but sure. It has like no pro presence, as far as I know. Um... Yeah, literally not a sync. Well, that's uh, that's support. Two games in pro, fifty percent solo queue. Um, fifty percent in solo queue, with like virtually no one plays him. So there's just been like some all capsers and memers that have been popularizing like Nocturne, you know, mid or top being OP. But wh whatever, it's fine. Um, the quickness. Now this is pretty significantly, uh, or pretty significant rather. Um, bonus movement speed going from 50% to 75%. Don't forget whenever you touch somebody with Rakan, you get double that speed. So his real speed, most of the time, in combat is now going to be 150% instead of 100%. That's a very, very big deal. So when you get in there and you tag somebody, you, you are going to be able to tag multiple people much more safely and comfortably than before. Because one of the biggest things with Rakan is you go in, you hit your initial target, you R and then W, or R flash and then W, but then the riskiest thing about him is, well, how many more people do you try to touch before you jump back to safety, right? You know, do you go for anyone else? Do you, you know, try to tag one person? You try to tag two people? Uh, it's a very tough decision a lot of times. And some of that, if you go too deep, your allies may not follow you and you may not have a jump back. So that's a very big deal. And a lot of that's predicated on what's your movement speed. So that's why a lot of people have been taking Shrelias on him because you get a lot of extra movement speed um, to help make that a bit easier. But now that they're giving you an extra effectively 50% movement speed in combat, it's going to be a really, really big deal. Um, so I don't necessarily think Rakan's going to be pick or ban after this, but I think that um, his win rate in solo queue might go up like 1%. It's actually pr not bad in solo queue. Historically, Rakan's like 48%, 49% in solo queue. It's because he's pretty challenging to play. Because like I said, you can bait yourself into trying to do too much. Um, but in pro, he hasn't really been played at all lately. But with the nerf to Nautilus, and with who's considered one of the main counters to Rakan, um, and Bard, who's also very good into Rakan, I think that we could see him 
potentially a bit more. He does have a 50% win rate, not a very high representation, only six games played, but I think he could move up quite a bit. The big problem is Zaya is terrible right now at ADC, and a lot of pro players don't like playing Rakan unless you have Zaya with him. So we'll see, but I like it. It's good. I think he'll go up a couple of percentage points, and he'll definitely see a bit more play, maybe 20% presence or something in pro next patch. Okay, set. Haymaker damage is down by 20 at later levels. Not early, so okay. And Facebreaker is also down 40 damage at later levels. Jeez. I don't know when you max... I think you max Facebreaker last, right? You probably max W first, then Q. So maybe that doesn't matter until level 13 plus, but... Eh, I don't know. I mean, set is still a little too... Um, probably a little too strong... With Blade of the Rune King especially, because he has such fast attack speed. But I don't think he's that overwhelming. I, I really don't understand. Is, is he played that much? 48%, but he does have a 70% presence, basically. Fine. Not a big deal, but it's nice. we got to speed up here. I don't want this to be longer than an hour. Okay, Skarner. So that, that's all right, sure. He'll probably still be pretty good, but this will maybe knock him down like a percentage or two. Skarner, yeah, they gave him some huge buffs last patch. It just totally didn't matter, I don't think. I mean, I've seen him in, like, one game, and we got destroyed in that game. Skarner's just a bait champ. He is at 50%. <clears throat> uh, there's just no reason to play Skarner when there's so many other choices, I feel like. So his total attack damage ratio is going up to 0 0.2, and his mana cost is going down to 10. But you don't want to buy that much AD on him, like... I thought that was one of the nice things about the previous change is you could go for something like Iceborne Gauntlet instead of having to go Trinity. Um, but, um, sure, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Yeah, you are going to save a lot of mana. I don't know if he really has a lot of mana problems on his clear. If he does, this could be a big deal, but since you already get so much mana and you have those spires that give you back a lot of mana in the jungle. Um, <clears throat> I just don't know if it's going to matter. I mean, they need to lower the cooldown on his ult. If they really want him to be picked a lot, he needs to be able to ult, like, very often. Like, 110 seconds or something. Level 1 on his ult. Or, I don't know, like, lower the cooldown on his, um, his movement speed increase or something. I, I, he just doesn't do enough. Uh, Syndra lowering her damage by 20 at later levels it's what you max first it'll probably matter once again a little confused I know she's considered kind of like OP and pro I think I mean she's the second most picked champ Twisted Fate still the most picked now these are before the Twisted Fate nerfs but she's got a 38% win rate it's like yeah she's got 55% presence but she's got a 38% win rate <clears throat> I feel like she's not that oppressive in solo queue either. No, 48%. So, like, okay, maybe one tricks and challenger, good on her, but, like, for most people in solo queue, it doesn't seem that big of a deal. Do they tell you which bracket this is? It's going to expand this out. It doesn't tell you that. It tells you up near the top. Like, here's the key. This is for jungle, bot, mid, and support. We nerfed this for... <clears throat> oh, they're saying right here for pro. So they okay, so they're telling you why. Okay, so Karma was nerfed for pro, Bard was nerfed for pro, Ash is nerfed for pro. Platinum through Diamond was Kha'Zix. They didn't put one for Nocturne. They're like, we don't know, we're just nerfing him. <laughs> we just hate him. Sets for pro. See, Syndra, I don't understand. It's the 33% win rate for pro. Um, so, okay, I, I don't know. Um, all right. Okay, so whatever. All right, Tristana. Now, I think this is a... Per 3%. Okay, they nerfed it. So on the PBE, they were saying this 1% for every 2%.
So it could do a maximum of 50% more damage. So I guess they decided that was too strong and they nerfed it back. So if you have 50% crit in the mid game, you got your Infinity Edge plus um, probably Rapid Fire Cannon. Uh, this would do like 17% more damage on your explosion, which is still pretty good. Um, I mean, what they really need to do for Triss is either give her the range back, which is probably too strong, or they need just, like, get rid of the, like, mandatory explosion on the minions. Because that's the biggest reason she hasn't played in pro, I think. One of the biggest reasons is she can't control the minion wave. You know, she's pretty much always has to push, and if you get pushed in, you have a really hard time last hitting because every time you kill something, it explodes. Um... So just make the explosive charge, just like lower the cooldown on it or something, um, and just allow her to use it on the wave. If she wants really fast wave clear, or just make it do like double damage to minions or something like that, or like maybe if it explodes on a minion, it refunds 50% of the cooldown. Just play around with that and just make it to where her like push is more controllable and not compulsory. And I think that would help her out a ton. But anyways, sure. This will be this will be pretty good. I mean, with twenty five percent, you'll get about eight percent more damage on your bomb, and your bomb does do a lot in the early game, and it does help you take towers faster. It's way it can double down as extra wave clear. So, okay, sure. I think that'll probably move her up a couple percentage points. Vagar magic resist going up two percent or two doesn't matter. Uh, Volibear movement speed nerfed. That's pretty significant, yeah, because when you're running towards a champion, it's going to be 20% instead of 30%. So that, that's a pretty big nerf to Volibear, especially as early game ganks. Um, so that, that, that's fine. I think he is a bit on the strong side. Yasuo, base damage is up at level 11 by 50. His magic resist is up by 2. That's fine. I think Yasuo is actually a really interesting and pretty balanced champion. I know that's like maybe a minority view i know that jolty really hates yasuo and there are certain people that hate him but i think he takes a lot of skill to play properly he does have really bad matchups like a lot of melee matchups he can get stomped he has a fairly low win rate at 48 percent. i think he's really fun to watch in pro when he is good there's a lot of outplay potentials i think he's one of the more exciting champions um to watch and he like literally was not picked at all on 10 14 um <clears throat> in pro so I think that's cool obviously with Yone coming up it'd be cool if both of them could be in the game you know Yasuo mid Yone top or something like that I know people are wanting the um, Yasuo Yone bot lane I I'm not entirely sold on that but either way fine it's not going to affect him early gives him a bit more power late I think that's good he's a very risky champion a lot of skill to play there's lots of counterplay to him and bad matchups Yes, against ranged champions, that win wall can feel really oppressive, but I think there are ways to play around that. It is on a very long cooldown. They did nerf that a while ago, I'm pretty sure, so um, I think that's fine. Okay, Ziggs, bonus damage ratio, 50 on his passive or going to 0.5. That's pretty significant at all levels. Um, so that means if you have 100 AP, then it's 20 extra damage. Damage multiplier to structures, 2.5. Okay, so that means he's dealing 25% more damage to structures off of that. I think that's pretty cool. So they're doubling down on what Ziggs is supposed to be good at, like pushing and knocking out structures. I like it. And I think that, you know, he's another one, kind of like the Cannon and Nico I was talking about. I think they should really push to have him be a bot lane champion right who can poke he can go great with stuff like uh you know the lux uh karma zerath velkos these heavy poke lanes and just go for super super push super poke and take down towers so kind of almost like a mage caitlin and i think that'd be a really interesting sort of play style and diversion i think heimerdinger was another one who was a very interesting bot lane that they kind of pushed him out so i would like to see more of that instead of just okay we have a ranged physical damage dealer just saying hey we have a really good early game comp. I'm going to go for Ziggs and try to hard push and get that tower, and then we can pressure for Dragon. Very good AoE fighter, too, with his ult. 
So if you have a really good AOE team fight, you know, you got like an Amumu jungle, you got a mid lane like Oriana or something, maybe you could go for Ziggs. So, I don't know. I like it. I like the direction. It's not making him that much stronger in mid. It's okay. Um, it'll help out a little bit, but maybe making him a bit better in bot lane. So I don't think he'll be that great, honestly. I mean, maybe as a support, but I still am doubtful. Maybe maybe you could play him with a Caitlyn or something in bot lane as a support. Um, be interesting if the support's going for that. I mean, what would he buy? I guess you just go for double pin. You need a mana item, though, like Ludens or something early. I believe... I haven't looked at Zig's like support potential in a long time. 325 movement speed's extremely slow. Um, 20 to 160 based on level, and then 50% AP bonus damage doubled to a lot versus structure. And its cooldown is lowered by... Whenever you use an ability, it's lowered by a certain amount of seconds. I mean, maybe if you go Mana Flow Band, Presence of Mind... Bouncing Bomb, they could lower his mana costs a little bit, maybe. Six second cooldown, does quite a bit. Not a ton, but it does push pretty well. I, I would like to see them lower the cooldown on Satchel Charge and really make that something like very interesting. You could demolish 35% of the targets. I mean, that's very good against plates because it ignores plates. So 25%, that'd be you'd be able to get the last plate or two. Um, I mean, maybe if you're against like Ezreal, Janna, or just like something else that just doesn't heal that you can just poke and push in really hard and you like have a Caitlyn or maybe an Ash, and you can just like hard pressure towers. Maybe, I mean, maybe I try it out. We'll see. It's just like, kind of like some of these other chances. Cooldowns are so long though. It's like 20 seconds on Satchel Charge, which is your only escape really. I think if you could react, if this was like a 16 second base cooldown and you could reactivate it mid air so you throw it at somebody you activate it midair and it blows them out so like if zach is trying to run at you or something you throw the satchel charge you blow him out of the air you know um, nautilus is trying to hook and engage if you can throw it he's trying to engage on your adc you blow him out of the air with the satchel charge i think that would be badass and it would be like really high skill cap and i think that would be super fun or if you could blow allies out like with your satchel charge without damaging your allies so if someone's like near a wall or something and they're, um, you know, they're trying to escape, you could throw the satchel charge and blow them over the wall to you. Or you could help your uh, jungler engage by throwing a satchel charge, blowing it so to like knock them over the wall to engage. I think that would be really freaking sweet if they did it that way um, to where the satchel charges blew everyone away. And maybe they increase the radius a little bit on it. Just a pinch, not a lot, but just like a little bit. Maybe 400 instead of 325. And it just blows everybody away. Kind of like a Janna Tornado. But it would damage enemies and not damage allies. I think that would be super, super sweet. But they're not doing that. But at least they're making him a little bit more viable mid lane. Inferno Bomb, pretty low cooldown, pretty high damage. Maybe. I mean, maybe in the, like a heavy poke lane, you could pick him if you like Zerath or Velkaz or Lux. is kind of like your poke champion du jour. In the bot lane, maybe you could go Ziggs and just go for the tower destruction. I'm not necessarily completely convinced that it's good, but at the same time, I don't necessarily think it would be terrible. He's just all in on push. Like, that that's what he does. And it's just long cooldowns, and he has virtually no protection. So if you get camped, or they play Leona or Nautilus or some other hard-engaged champ, that could be a big problem. But if you hit a large percentage of these bombs, or you just, like, keep um, bombing the back line and just Caitlyn just keeps pushing them in over and over again... This could be really good. So I would only play it with like Caitlyn or Ash, um, but I think it could be good. Okay, Nimbus Cloak. Well, viable. Let me use the word viable instead of good. Okay, Nimbus Cloak. Movement speed. Um, is going down by quite a bit. I like this. I feel like Nimbus Cloak is just a little too toxic. Like when the ADC start running this all the time, it just feels a little too good. It's like junglers, every jungler runs it. All the ADCs are running it. Just everybody's running this item. And it just feels like it's just a little too good. Like, it's pretty much guarantees if you flash, you're going to get away. And it's it's like power creep. It's almost like you have to have it. So I think that's constraining a lot of potential builds out there. So um, 
I don't know. I'm kind of glad that it's gone. There's already enough ways to, like, close the gap on people, especially as a jungler. So many junglers are taking phase rush anyways. Like, phase rush plus Nimbus Cloak plus Celerity plus Water Walking. It's like, do you really need all that? Um, so, yeah, I think... I, and that's, like, just too strong against immobile champs that don't take that stuff. So I think this is pretty good, especially if they're going to leave phase rush alone, which is kind of taken over also. I think this is a, a good, clean way to... Um, at least take it out of the ADC role a little bit more. So, anyways, okay, well, that's gonna be it. Went over a little bit of an hour, so sorry about that, but it was a lot of chance. So, overall, I like it. I like what they're doing. I think it's interesting. I think most of the stuff that they're touching are things that, like, it, there's a lot of buffs, first of all. I like that, but the stuff that they're buffing is stuff that's, like, interesting in the role that does something a little bit different right we have zigs for like a, i think for a pushing bot lane is where he'd be best yasuo very cool champion i know people might hate me for that i think he's very fun i think he's interesting i'm never going to play him he's way too mechanically intense and high skill cap for for me i'm a bit too old for all that but um i think that he is really sweet volibear definitely a little too strong especially in pro play nerfed him back a little bit i think that's a good way to do it um, Vagar, I don't know, doesn't matter. Tristana, interesting ADC. I think really OP if she gets far ahead, if she's too strong. So they got to be careful. I like they nerfed it back to um, basically 1% per 3% instead of per 2%. I think that was a good call. I think she'll be stronger. So that's good. Um, Sandra, don't really understand it, but she's kind of a toxic champion anyways, especially in Challenger and Pro. Skarner, I don't get it, but some people like that champ, so sure, give him a little buff. Set, definitely a little too strong. Nice nerf. Rakan, very biased right there, but I think Rakan is a very fun and interesting champion to have in the meta as well. So I like him um, being buffed up. That might, maybe if he's really good, maybe Zaya will come back in. They really need to nerf Zaya's or like buff Zaya's R to where it's like 130 second cooldown instead of 160 or at least 140. Nocturne, I don't get it, but sure, once again, I think he's kind of a toxic champ when he's very good. His his darkness is obnoxious. Nico, interesting champ. Don't think it's going to be enough, but I like them making her a little more relevant. Nautilus, OP and pro, good choice. Morgana, good kind of anti-CC champ. Very anti-fun. I don't like going against her, but I think it's good to have a champion like that to replace Tom Kench, especially in pro play. So it's not just whichever team has the most CC wins. You do have at least a little bit of an answer. Um, Lucian, interesting champ. Cool. Kha'Zix, just, I hate him. I like that he's getting nerfed. Karthus, okay. Really uninteresting champ when he's too strong in the jungle, so I'm glad they're nerfing him out. Karma, don't like that one. That's the one I really don't like on this patch. Um, Jinx, okay. Jin, all right. Interesting ADC. Jax, I hate, I, I mean, I think it, like Jax is just really boring and lames. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Jax anyways, but sure. Hecarim, probably not going to matter. Fiora, I think, is interesting. Eve, I don't know where they're going, but that's an interesting idea. Bard, kind of hate to see it, but statistically probably needs to happen. Ash, okay, a little too strong. They really need to nerf Caitlyn if they're going to do that, but Caitlyn's only been buffed for one patch. Anna Kali, kind of like Yasuo. A lot of people hate her. I think she's very interesting. I think she's fun to watch. Um, so I'm, I'm on board with that. So anyways, overall, very good patch. I'm a big fan of most of it. Um, should uh, make things a bit interesting. Allows for some stuff to play with out there. But anyways, that's going to be it. Have a good day. We'll see everybody next time.